Le Paymat has a very significant meaning for me. Recently, when I got the recipe from my mom, I think that's what made it even more special. <laughs> It's a very sweet dish that my mom would make a lot of it. After the iftar, we would go to the kitchen and just steal some of it and eat it, and even in the middle of the night. So it has a, so many memories actually with this dish, like a, you know, on a spiritual level, I would assume. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a very, very uh, close thing to my heart. And recently when I got the recipe from my mom, I think that's what made it even more special. To prepare the dish of luqaymat, you will need one cup of flour, two tablespoons of sugar, baking powder, a sprinkle of salt, one tablespoon of yeast, and a little bit of oil. Yeah. Then you're ready. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> When I lived in Oman, I think I would say that I was always myself until the society has taught me that it's wrong to be the certain way just because of religion beliefs or even the, when I went to therapy, the therapist just simply told me, oh, you just have to be faithful to God, you have to read Quran and you would be better. And I was like, okay, for the longest time I've been reading, I've been praying and it never helped, you know, it was much more pain than that. Everything around me was so triggering and being in a low point my whole life there it's like every corner that I see has just been triggering, triggering, triggering and I'm, I'm, I was so tired of it, I was like... Fetish! <laughs> I, I left and I've never felt happier for choosing myself. If I, I think if I would have stayed there, the only solution would is just to end me, you know, and I didn't want that. I have so much to offer to this world to just end it, you know. My friends just collected money together and uh, I left. And then when I arrived here, I was really, really shocked of how little I knew about Zalan because it was, it's, it's really actually so beautiful. The people are very supportive, the people are very creative. They all know each other, so, you know, like sometimes I'm really not scared walking in the street because I was like, if someone tries to see something, I would see them the next day, you know, it's like, gal. So um, I'm really not worried about this, you know. I'm gonna take this, the good ones. I always wanted to do drag in my life, but I didn't have the courage to do makeup by myself. I would say Zabrukin has given me the space to do that. Like it felt like, okay, now you've settled, what do you want to do with your life? And I felt like, okay, what did I want to do back then in my home? Because it really feels like there, you know, we didn't have much of a queer scene, but we had queer people. And I, I, I wanted to create the same feeling that I had when I watched the first drag show. <laughs> So this is Luqaymat, you habibis, and uh, bon appetit, I guess. Mm. I'm really good. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Nice, I'm glad. <laughs> uh, uh, I did not have much contact with my family, I did not talk to my mom for a month. And I asked her just uh, a couple of weeks ago, like, could you just give me the recipe of Luqaymat? And then she gladly did. So that, that made me so happy and it made me feel like, okay, they still care about me even though that I'm in this way. And I can see that there is a pressure of society on her to think of a certain way of pressure of religion. So that made me feel so happy. It feels like she's still like 
on like on my side you know because she was my best friend and always be <laughs> so to be able to cook this recipe today i think yeah i think yeah i would have her with me i don't want to cry now but yeah <laughs> my makeup <laughs> yeah and they say that i look like her in drag so Do I look bonita or no? Of course. <laughs> Thank you.